Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Last time in court we brought up the possibility that maybe Giselle Brett uh, possibly poisoned the victim. However, it seemed dire for us as we could not prove it, but just at the last moment, the person whose name escapes me right now uh, brought up a supposed package that is going to help us prove our innocence here. Let's continue, let's see what's going on. Yeah, her name. I think her name was Susada or something. Well, I understand you are the judicial assistant to the defense, but why does this sudden ingress it? Well, why this sudden ingress into my court? Ha! A judicial assistant and a woman, no less. Oh, wow! It's it's that kind of statements you're gonna be making, huh? The rules state that females are not permitted into this court of law other than to testify. Dang, dude! What the heck? Yeah, Susado is her name. Yes, I fully understand. I ask only for five minutes of time. I have some vital evidence that I must hand over to the defense. Ha! You're too late, little girl! This trial has already been concluded. Five minutes. I will not allow a moment more. But, Your Excellency! Yeah, just stand down, you sexist prick. I, I am most grateful. Oh, hello. Welcome to the team. Um, who exactly are you? I'm sorry, but there's no time. Please, simply accept this for now. What is it? A report about something? Written in English. It's Giselle Brett's research. The English woman's? After the trial resumed earlier, I hurried back to the university. I went to Dr. Wilson's laboratory in the medical faculty uh, and borrowed this paper. Oh yes, that's right. Miss Brett was studying under the professor, wasn't she? So does this research, whatever it is, have something to do with the case? I'm afraid I don't know. I mean, I just love the music in this game so much, dude. It's so good. Like, this is this track. I need to figure out what it's called. And, get, and uh, get it. Alright. Uh, I haven't been able to listen to the proceedings of the trial myself. Oh, no, of course not. Special characteristics of a curare and its effects on human subjects. Interesting. What is that? What does that mean? What is curare? Yeah. Curare, what's that? I've never heard of that word before. Dude, thank you, Reno. Okay, you're saying exactly what I'm thinking. Time's up. The prosecution demands the immediate removal of this female trespasser from the courtroom. There was too little time for me to read it in detail, but I've summarized what I could on a note just inside the cover. Oh, so you understand English, okay. If you think it could be valuable, please cast your eye over it. This is wonderful, thank you. Giselle's report, a report detailing an unknown poison that Miss Brett had been researching during her time at UMA University. Poison, you say? Goodbye then, and good luck. Poison? Well, how convenient for us. You have had long enough counsel. We cannot detain our English guests any long- What? We cannot detain our English- Oh, uh, what? I guess that makes sense. I, I would probably would have said hold, but whatever. Yeah, we cannot detain our English guests any longer. Yeah, she's probably mad that we're holding her. But she, sh she should be more mad that we're about to get her arrested for a moita. I ask the prosecution and the defense now one last time. Does either side have any further evidence to present to the court? I presume not, but... Dude, you're an idiot! Did you not just see me? Like, she uh, interrupted the court to say, I got new evidence! Oh my... That prosecution has made its case convincingly enough already. Nothing more to add, your excellency. Rinosuke, we're out of options here. This really is our la very last chance. Yes, I know. Your Excellency, the defense does have new evidence. Hmm, that look. The unyielding stare of a true Japanese warrior. Well, Miss Brett? Yes, Your Excellency? If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you could grace us with your presence a little longer? It's a delightful invitation, but I'm afraid. 
It's not so very long until tea time. I'll have to... Forgive me, Miss Brett. It seems I wasn't clear. I realized it was phrased as a question. However, I must ask you treat that as an order. Yes! I've said it many times before, but... The, the Japanese language makes no sense. My apologies, dear lady. So, counsel... What's well, this new evidence that demands the court's attention? Alright, so I already know that this game might treat me, like, might make me examine it before I present it. So we better do that before I actually look at it or I present it. Synopsis, a poison made from the bark of certain trees in the jungles of South America. The hunters of the region have used it since ancient times to incapacitate their prey. Special characteristics, effects. Instant paralysis of the entire body and subsequent death, even in minute doses. Routes of entry. The above mentioned effects occur when the poison enters the body through a wound, such as that inflicted by a blowpipe dart. Okay, so anyone who has a wound on their body can be affected by the poison. Practical applications, due to its ability to render the human body paralytic, it's believed that the toxin could have an application as an anesthetic. However, a solution for the respiratory arrest caused as a result of full body paralysis must be found first, or patients would die of suffocation. Yeah, that is true. You don't want your lungs to be paralyzed um, when taking anesthesia. That's the tricky bits of it, isn't it? But it doesn't seem like we can get any more information here, so we'll just present it. Yes! Miss J. Zelbrett, we understand you are studying under Dr. Wilson at UMA University, doing research. Oh, she knows where we're going with this. Research by sheer coincidence, perhaps, into a deadly poison. What? Poison? Where are you going with this, Council? A toxin known as a curare, Your Excellency. Even the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering the body leads to instant death. Okay, well, it wasn't instant, instant. What? What incomplete and utter nonsense. Career, you say? I've never even heard of it. Well, neither have I. That doesn't matter right now. You wouldn't have done. What do you, what do you mean? I mean that you wouldn't have heard of Curare before, for one very simple reason. It doesn't exist in our country. It doesn't exist. Correct, which means no matter what tests the police can do for toxins, they never identify Curare. Why? Because there is no test available here that can identify the presence of this highly deadly poison. Okay, I'm not sure. I wasn't expecting this. I th I thought the poison was just in the glass and not in the whole bottle, you know? That Because that would explain why she took the glass with her, right? But maybe that is still the case, and so we're not getting to that yet. Order, order, order! Council, does this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report authored by the visiting research student from England, Carrera has long been used by the tribes people of South America as a poison to lace their arrows. It seems as reasonably well known among European doctors and scientists. To, to lace their arrows? The report states that it is, it is produced from the extract of a tree that grows deep in the Amazonian jungle. It was first brought back to Europe at the turn of the century by explorers. So yeah, this was very recent then. It claims that the animals shot by arrows laced with curare suffer instant death. Doesn't that about sum it up, Miss Brett? Objection! Trumpery! These aspersions are utter trumpery! To start with, if the victim had been administered some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have been squirming and writhing in pain, and the other diners would have surely noticed. Well, it depends on how long it takes effect, you yeah. know. Hmm, that's true. What do you say to that, Inspector? Obviously, I would not have noticed a disturbance like that, or would have noticed. Hmm, I don't remember anything like that either. I didn't notice the professor being in any kind of pain. Except he was taking pain medication! According to this, however, it's the other way around. 
What do you mean, the other way around? The very fact that the victim didn't show any visible signs of distress is evidence that the curair was used. Wait, what? Does this numb? Oh, it per oh, wait, no, it paralyzes them, so it probably numbs them from the pain, yeah. Explain yourself, counsel. The moment this toxin enters a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. In other words, afflicted victims lose all strength and are completely unable to move. Even if they are in total agony, there will be no visible signs of pain at all. How oh, terrible! Obviously, if a man lost all strength in his muscles, he collapsed on the floor. But with a chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, the effects could go largely unnoticed. I don't follow, Kazuma. That's just paralysis. I thought the poison caused instant death. I think instant death is just an exaggeration of it. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. The poison causes immediate paralysis, as I said, leaving the victim unable to move. Yeah, it's not... It's not instant, it's just the fact that it paralyzes their lungs and they can't breathe anymore, so they suffocate and die. It also probably paralyzes their heart, too. After a short time, the paralysis is so severe it causes the muscles that control its respiration to fail. Respiration? In other words, the actual cause of death is suffocation. And all the while, the victim is conscious and aware, just unable to move. Yeah, that's gotta suck. Like, being unable to breathe like that for seemingly no reason. That's hideous! To the observer, it would look almost like the victim was slipping peacefully into an endless sleep. But for the victim himself, his final moments would be a living hell. That is the true nature of this deadly cure poison. Yeah, it's got it really gotta suck experiencing that. You gotta be like probably the wor worst way to die. And you're suggesting that this bottle council actually contains this terrifying poison? Objection! This this is all very convenient, isn't it? A hitherto unknown poison for which there is no means of testing what a happy tale for the defense. Ahem, if I may. All these facts you think you're so clever, but... I bet she's gonna drink it, isn't she? It is you who must be taught. Uh, of course. Dear lady! So, this is how you Japanese behave, is it? What? You steal another's honest hard work and then announce the results as if you discover them. I'm appalled. What a loathsome act. Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Oh man, that's such a good line there. Whatever do you mean? Capitalizing on the unfortunate circumstances of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime. That really is a loathsome act. Won't you agree? Enough of this. I, for one, refuse to accept it. The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the Great Empire of Japan is... is breaking the rules! Well, it sucks to be you then, doesn't it? Ha ha ha! What's so funny? Oh, excuse me. Your Excellency? Y yes Miss Brett? May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? Yeah, she's gonna drink it. Oh, well, yes, I don't see, a uh, why not? I'm surprised he's, he would even think to pour her that. Don't get too big for your boots, you insignificant little island boys. Sorry? To an English woman such as myself, this whole affair is a farcial comedy. Your little police games and these foolish courtroom antics, it's laughable, really. But I'm getting bored of it all now. It's time for the games to end. Cheers. Cheers. And that's hard doing a woman's voice. Wait, what what are you doing? Hmm. 
No sparkle left at all. How appropriate for this shabby affair. Yeah, see, now this is the part where we have to prove that the poison was in the glass, not the bottle. That's what I've been trying to say this whole time. Goodness. Whatever is the matter, you all look quite stunned. So, no cure air. The bottle was clean, is that what you're saying? There's also the possibility too, um, I don't know anything about this poison, but maybe it just becomes, you know, not f functional after some time, like it degrades. It has been a couple days, but that's probably not it. It's probably the glass like that I'm talking about. Ha 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 ha! You look quite incredulous, little boy. But of course... That's the simple truth. This is like the most amount of her face that we've seen yet. Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue. Most kind. Grrr. Thank you, waiter. Now then, Your Excellency. Oh, um, yes, Miss Brett? I should like to be excused now, please. I think I've given more than enough of my time for the furtherance of friendship between our countries. Ah, uh, yes, dear lady. We are most gratified with all the assistance you, ha you, you have given. This doesn't make sense. There had to have been poison in that bottle. So how... How did she... How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? I don't understand it. Well, I suppose, if nothing else, this little Far Eastern charade. Well, make for an interesting conversation at the next party I attend in London. There. There has to have been poison in that bottle. Doesn't there? There can't have been, because otherwise she would have keeled over dead. Come on, Ryunosuke. We have all the clues now. That bottle of water contains no poison. As I thought, there is no poison in that bottle. What? Why? Why, Ryunosuke? Isn't it obvious? If there's poison in there, she'd be dead by now. Sometimes your un unadulterated uh, naivety really astounds me. But sometimes, it's in need of a good staining. So it's as dark as your uniform in the ways of the world. Oh, is that what this color is supposed to re represent? That was a guileless ending to a promising line of inquiry counsel for which you will be paying- What? Ugh, this whole trial's- What? Are you kidding me? Has to have been poisoned that bottle, doesn't there? Excuse me, game? Okay, I guess it does contain poison. Maybe it was my other line of reasoning too. Maybe it just doesn't work anymore. Hang on, let me check this again. May okay, maybe. Okay, new theory. Maybe it um, if you eat it. Like, it, like, maybe your body can digest it, and it doesn't affect you. Like, it's only when it enters the bloodstream that it actually kills you. Looks like it contains poison. The culprit did put cure air poison into Dr. Wilson's carbonated water. I... The defense refuses to change its position. You're serious? Fool, are you blind? There's no possible way that bottle could contain poison. I mean, we just saw... Miss Brett drinking the water from it? That's right. Which rather complicates your argument, I think. And I believe that complication can be explained. How, exactly? I need to think through all the things that don't quite add up here, one by one. I'm sure the answer is in the evidence we have in the court record somewhere. It has to be. Very well. If the defense truly intends to assert assert this claim, then I must ask you to support the assertion with evidence. 
What well, explains how the witness was able to consume the supposedly poisoned water unscathed. I am so confused now. What explains how the witness was able to conceive a supposedly poison water unscathed? Unscathed? What? Oh, the witness. Not okay. I was thinking that it was the victim. Wait, now do I? That's so dumb, though. If it is the glass, because the the question that I I just answered right is that the bottle contains poison. Hang on, let me re-examine the, the pictures. I don't know, man. It better be this freaking glass. Yes. Oomph. It seems the defense, or should I say, the wretched accused. Oh, come on. Is the real source, is the only real source of complication in this case? You'll have to think harder than that, defendant. Sorry, your excellency. Try to find some better supporting evidence. You're making this complication more complicated than it needs to be. Alright, I'll do my best to find an answer that fits the facts. The defense, sorry, the wretched accused, truly attempts to assert this claim. And I must ask you to support this assertion with evidence. How the witness is able to consume this supposedly po poison water without unscathed? It's not the bag? Okay, maybe, I think I think it's gonna be the report then. It's probably I think the argument here is that it's only when it enters the bloodstream that it's deadly. Yes. Yep, that was right. The answer to this riddle is right here in Miss Brett's own research report. I've got two theories going on at the same time here. It, they're not. I keep trying to do both of them. It's not working. That's not a valid explanation. No. After all. We don't speak English! That report is utter gibberish! This impudent young scoundrel is trying to ridicule the court, Your Excellency. Let's get a freaking translator in here and get the full details of the report then. I'm not trying to ridicule anyone on it, I'm just reading uh, Sus Susato san's notes. I concur. This report is too extensive to be considered in its entirety by its court. Excuse me? Excuse me? It's too extensive? It's as too much information. How is that a problem? That is. Oh my god. I'm throwing a fit now. You'll direct us to the pertinent section, Council. Okay. This is gonna make me point out the page. Uh, I need to check what page it was. Uh, I'm gonna poison enters the body through. Yeah, it's the second page. The special characteristics. We've been hearing a lot about this Curera poison. And it's left me curious about something. Oh, Council? Well, it sounds as though indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years to lace the heads of the arrows that they shoot at whatever prey they're hunting. So we've been led to believe, yes. And the point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to that point, please. But if they were to use these laced arrows, doesn't that mean that there would be traces of poison left in the prey the hunters were going to eat? Yes, good point. So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat their prey, would they? Because then they'd be eating poison. Okay, like surely after some time and like some cooking, then the poison would also degrade too. But whatever, I'm gonna let's follow this logic. Good gracious, Council! Now that would be madness! But I actually found the answer to that conundrum in this research paper here. Under special characteristics, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. Through a wound, you say? Oh, I see, that makes sense. Yes, the mention of that particular detail seems a little strange to me, though. <gasps> oh, what if... Okay... Hang on, I need to check something real quick. The medical report card. I don't want to read it, hang on. I wanted to- okay. 
He just had some work done with his teeth. So maybe there was some exposed wound in his mouth still. And that's how he died. It's because he drank the water and it entered the po and entered his bloodstream through his mouth. That that's probably it. Yes, the mention of that particular detail seemed a little strange to me, though. But it all makes sense when you interpret what's written like this. When Curare enters the body through an open wound, it has a terrifying poisonous effect. However... When it enters the body via the mouth, it has no poisonous effects whatsoever. What? Miss Brett. You authored this research. You knew Carrera's, uh, special characteristics. And you knew that you could make a spectacle of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little. That's... That's a live swan? What? Well, Ryunosuke, it turns out... You're an even better lawyer than I thought you'd be. Really? Me? Lawyer. Oh, all this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure. But I fail to see how possibly. Oh, she's angry now. Her mask is like longer too, as well as the the boyd. So the ill-bred little puppy has a new toy to play with. Some facts he he read in a book. But yeah, a book you wrote. But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. What are you trying to say? Your schoolboyish logic has a fatal flaw. Schoolboy? Yeah, she's gonna say he has no wound, but it's gonna be in his mouth! Flaw? As even your brain has managed to deduce, Kirara is safe to ingest. Seems likely that its effects are neutralized by the acidic nature of the gastric succus. Succus? What? 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 Never heard that word before. Oh, yes, well, of course. Oh, he's doing the Phoenix right pose. <laughs> Ga gastric suckers? What are they? So if this lethal poison is completely harmless when drunk, the professor wouldn't have died when he swallowed it, would he? Ah, uh, that's right. Good gracious. That's basic science. Science that even a schoolboy should be able to understand, no? I'm already one step ahead of you, though. Order! Order in the court! Order! The logic holds. If the lady and the professor drank the same poison, they will be affected in the same way. Are, are you trying to suggest... Yes! This carrier poison is completely irrelevant to the case on trial. Are you... What?! You are absolutely joking me right now. You cannot say that someone's drink was poison and it's unrelated to the murder of that poison or that that of that person, you know? That is completely ridiculous. That's right. Surely even a little cockroach like you could understand something as simple as that. What is going on here? Everything's gone monotone. What is this welling up inside me? I've never felt like this before. It's a sort of conviction to break down all the discrepancies. It's so intense, almost rage-like. And more than anything else, it's an animalistic desire to take down my prey. Oh, yes! He said it! He said the thing! I don't think so, Mr. Zell Brett. How, how dare you use that tone with me? You know very well that there's no fatal flaw here. You know exactly why, even though both you and the victim saw the same poison. You are alive, but Dr. Wilson is dead. Counsel, I'm sure I don't need to remind you. You must provide compelling evidence. As we now know, this poison is completely harmless when ingested. Why would Dr. Wilson alone have been killed by the Pakira? I'll tell you why! I'll tell you why! It's right... There! Is Miss Brett so readily pointed out? She drank the same waiter, the water as the professor. However, there is a fundamental and fatal difference between the two diners. A fatal difference? The 
toxic effects of Curera only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So for a healthy person with no injuries, drinking it is completely harmless. But... What if there was a wound inside the mouth of the person drinking the poison water? Inside? Yes, like the wound you might have. If you had just been to the dentist and had a tooth extracted, for example. Ah! Ooh! Miss Brett, you've acknowledged many times in your testimony already that you were well aware of Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. Ah! So that's it? You use that knowledge to orchestrate this. We got her nail. <laughs> is, is she laughing? I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtroom games and your half-baked arguments are also puerile. You know what would be really funny right now is if she cut herself and then poured the, the water into her wound too, and then... And then I have to prove that it was in the glass. But what do you mean? Don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. Is she actually gonna do that? Please don't tell me. You see, when you leave vital evidence lying around, you never know what might happen to it. No! I mean, it could just slip. You can't just destroy evidence like this in the middle of court and get away with it. Like, she clearly did that on purpose. Oh dear, how careless of me. I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. Uh, uh, no! What is this? It's, it's the English woman. She just smashed that bottle. And the Supreme Court, what a terrible blunder. What are you guys talking about? It's so obvious she did that on purpose. Oh my gosh. Officer, what are you waiting for? Collect up as much of the water from that broken bottle as possible. At once. You're wasting your time. This delightful carpet under my feet here was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you, it will soak up the water beautifully. You have neither technology nor the presence of mind to recover it. Ah, ah, ah. How could you? You, you won't get away with this. You can thump that the bench and shout as much as you like, little boy. But I'm afraid we'll never know now, will we? If there really was poison in the bottle, or not. You. And let us not forget, we saw some very compelling evidence left intact. Isn't that right, counsel for the prosecution? Oh, of course, of course. You're referring to this photographic print, I presume, dear lady. That's right, and really, looking at this photograph, it's clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting with his back to me. So, of course, the only person who could have shot him from the front is the little schoolboy. I'm so glad. Oh, no, I can... Okay. I thought... He I thought Ryunosuke said that objection, but I guess Kazuma said it too, whatever. No, you killed the victim that day using cure air. And then in order to frame Ryunosuke Naruhoto for the crime. You waited until he picked up the pistol you'd arranged for him to find on the floor. Before you shot the professor's dead body in the chest with your own hidden gun. Then in the confusion that followed, all he had to do was turn the dead professor and his chair around. You see, you had every opportunity to commit this crime. <laughs> what a wonderful imagination you have, young man. A hidden gun, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but you don't have a shred of evidence. Exactly. And as you have nothing to support your wild claims, the prosecution's stance remains unchanged. The victim, John, Dr. John H. Wilson, was killed by a gunshot to the chest. De delivered in cold blood by the accused, Ryunosuke Naruhoto. Ugh. Hmm. This is unbelievable. How can this be happening? 
we had her, but now, is she really gonna get away with it? The way she destroyed that evidence was obscene. I, I know, man, I'm with you here. Rinosuke, yes, we've come this far, but now, now you're the only one who can finish it. What, what do you mean? We've lost a lot of a vital piece of evidence, it's true. So if there are any clues left for us to use now, they must be in your head. In my head? What the heck are you talking about? You told me before your powers of observation were the one thing you could really depend upon. Well, yes, that's true, but I did manage to notice that this woman was a foreigner with a swan on her head. So think back again now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw, everything you felt, every color, every smell. What I saw, what I felt. Every color. What? But that's not evidence. That's not evidence. It's Kazuma, right? Somewhere in the vibrant memory memory of the same scene in my head. Could there be another clue to, to expose the identity of Dr. Wilson's killer? All right, guys. I think I'm going to leave it here for today. I hope you enjoyed. I think the episode's getting long enough. But yeah, next time we will point out that very obvious blood stain in our mind. So yeah, I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye!